Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway World. One of New York's biggest hits, The Play That Goes Wrong, is back up and running with audiences laughing all over again here at New World Stages. And I'm with two of the show's creators. Hi, I'm Henry Lewis. And that's Henry Lewis. And we're here to chat about the show. Well, first of all, it is great to see you two. Welcome back to New York. Thanks. Welcome back to your theater. How does it feel? Amazing. Well, we, we just saw the show here yesterday and it was absolutely fantastic. It's in such good shape. And we, we obviously, since we've moved here, we've been wanting to come over and see it, but we haven't been able to because of the pandemic. So it was absolutely awesome to come here and watch and watch 300 people laugh. It was really great. Yeah. Well, he's taken all the good things to say there, but um, no, it's it's excellent to be in New York. I've missed it so, so much. And this theatre is brilliant for this show because there's that little bit more intimacy. So all the kind of big slapstick moments, they feel even more real, I think, than at the Lyceum. And it just feel, yeah, it, it really works for the show, this venue. And the cast are brilliant. And we just had a great time so far. Yeah, because I spent a lot of time with you two when you opened here in 2017. I think it was April 2nd yes. when you had your opening night. What do you remember? How magical was opening night here on Broadway for you? Oh, it was it was incredible. Yeah, really, really amazing. I mean, obviously, we'd done this show for a long time, uh, and it had started in a really, really small way, you know, in 60-seat pub theatre in London. Um, so, yeah, to bring it all the way to kind of Broadway and open on Broadway was, yeah, it was very, very special indeed. What do you remember about opening night on Broadway? Opening night, I remember, like, post-show, we went to the party, oh. and we were in a cab on the way there and there was a huge huge um traffic jam um and we got a phone call being like where are you all where are you all everyone is waiting for the cast and we were like well we were stuck in traffic and we worked out we were just under a mile away so the decision was reached that we ran to the party we got out of the cab and we sprinted there so if you look at the videos back while we're being interviewed a lot of us are kind of like <gasps> and that's why because we ran to press night so that's what i remember and I, was, I was like, are they prima donnas? They were like, no, they're stuck in a cab. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's usually the way. <laughs> I mean, I love being on the set here at New World Stages. This is beautiful. I mean, it was, it was much bigger, a little bigger at the Lyceum, but it's like, you're right. The audience is right with you here, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, I think it's sort of a bit more like it was kind of back at the Old Red Line, the pub theatre we did in London, where um, you're seeing kind of big slapstick comedy, but really, really close up, uh, which I think is really, really exciting. And, you know, when, when, when stuff malfunctions with the set, you really feel like it's right on top of you. So it's got that extra bit of jeopardy in there, which is nice. Yeah. How does it feel for you to be on this set here? It, it, it's really hard to explain because it kind of feels really surreal, particularly after the period of time that we've all just been through. Where we've, you know, we've not gone out of our houses, let alone into different countries, but then also just feels like being home. So yeah. uh, a mixture. Have you been able to put the past two years or so into any kind of perspective? I'm going to start with you this time. Oh, God. You asked him, how does it feel to be on the set? You asked me, how do I... What's my thoughts on the pandemic? Um, well, obviously, <laughs> obviously, a really horrible time. Yeah. Um, really, really difficult. And um, it, it's been amazing. I think the one thing that has kind of kept me hopeful is seeing how many people in the industry have worked so tirelessly behind the scenes to, to, you know, to make sure that we can come back and that we're all able to do stuff like this. And um, But I, I haven't really got a, a kind of overall yeah. takeaway from it other than, other than I'm just so glad that we're, we're slowly coming out of it. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, same here. I think that um, it's all, I think we've always said that these shows are kind of, I think it re really, really important for people to laugh and stuff. And I think that um, uh, it, that's more true now than ever, right? I think it's really important to be able to come and uh, forget about what's going on outside, forget about kind of the pandemic and stuff and come and just and kind of laugh. And I think a lot of people have found that that's kind of been quite therapeutic. We did actually a, a sort of series of live stream shows back in the UK, um, which people watched all around the world, actually. So lots of people from America. And um, it was really, really nice to be able to bring a bit of laughter into people's uh, sort of houses and do something that was kind of a bit more, sort of like a bit like a kind of online community, I guess, show with people tuning in. And, and we took suggestions from the audience, all kind of improv stuff. Um, and that was really nice to kind of bring people together at a time when it was just really impossible to bring people together. So um, that's kind of been our mission at Mischief while it's been going on. But uh, no, certainly a really tough time. And I, I really hope that uh, that theatre starts to starts to rebuild itself here and, 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 and all around the world. There's yeah. a really different sensation, I think, at the moment watching the show. So we've just been from out to Chicago to see a play that goes wrong and out in Canada as well watching one of our other shows, Peter Pan Goes Wrong. And the... the the laughter in some way feels different. It feels like there's more of a sense of catharsis going on, but it's, it's just so important that people come together. And, you know, if, I don't know particularly, like, I just think some people just really deserve it, like health workers, all that kind of stuff. Like, it's so nice to be able to just give people 
a, an hour or two of joy. And I think actually, like, you know, our work is profoundly silly, right? And, and, and funny, hopefully, but, but it, it's silly stuff. And actually, coming out of the last two years, there's actually a... Uh, there's something deeper now to this work just because I think the human spirit really calls out and cries out to be together and, be, and to be able to laugh like that. So it's, it's been really wonderful to, to be able to sit amongst audiences in different places and experience that. Because I have friends who have seen this show numerous times and this was the one show they were waiting for the most to come back in New York. They've been twice already and they just sat here and had the time of their life just laughing, being with people again as, and watching what you created. So I want to take you back to the beginning. I mean, you guys went to school together, you lived together. I mean, you wrote this piece at home. I mean, is there a favorite memory for each of you when you were writing the play that comes to mind? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I think that um, we wrote it, we were living in a really, really sort of small flat in London when we wrote it. And one, the memory I have that is that I always small think of, generous. small as generous, very small. <laughs> um, but the memory I always have was quite weird. There, was, there, was, there were these two people doing a documentary about us at the time. Um, which was never, has never aired, <laughs> but <laughs> they were making a documentary and um, we said, okay, well, we were very flattered that people wanted to make a documentary about us. And we thought, okay, well, why don't you come and, come and film us writing? And we, we just, they came to our house and they filmed a writing session or two. This is such and I, a weird memory. This is a weird memory, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I've not talked about this much. This is your uh, favourite memory. It's not my favourite memory, but it's a good memory, I think. And it, and and the, and basically they they st and they kept sort of staying and my, the room we wrote was the living room. I also slept in it. It was like my bedroom as well because it's a small flat. And um, I went to bed at the end of the day. And John and Shields <laughs> went to their rooms, and uh, the, they stayed. They they were there filming for the documentary. And I got into I got into bed and sort of had a glass of water and sort of lay there. They were still sort of filming. And I thought, okay, well, good good night. And they were like, no, don't acknowledge the camera. I was like, okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll just remain here then. And I sort of like, turned off the light. They still stayed. And, and it was so bizarre. And I closed my eyes and I, then I woke up and they weren't there. So they did leave at some but point. I remember but it was in my room, like lying there. And I just said, you know, I've been like, I'd really like to go to sleep now. <laughs> that was a very strange, that was a very strange memory from, from the writing after one of the writing mm. sessions of Play the Goes Wrong. At least they left. They did. They did. They did. Did they come back the next day? They did come back the next day. Yeah, they know. They were with us for a few months. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Favorite memory for you? Favorite memory? Probably just the fact that we were all working different jobs. So a lot of the show was written because um, mm -hmm. Henry and Henry were working in bars. Um, so we, we'd all kind of arrive back at the flat quite late. So the show was written you know in the wee small hours quite often and yeah. and i suppose just i just remember just really really looking forward to to getting home and and doing that and i just remember laughing a lot um i remember there's a bit in the show where there's a musical spike um uh, uh, um and and the, the the joke is basically it goes on for longer than the actors would have desired and i remember just us doing that in our flat having this really dramatic music on and just trying to perform that moment to each other and, and just laughing. And as well, I remember the rehearsal of it. The rehearsal was done in this little old abandoned railway arch. And I remember all the guys, you know, all of us coming together, coming up with stuff and kind of building the show together. And yeah, just just, just look back on it as just being a really wonderful kind of innocent time as well, you know? Yeah, we, we first rehearsed the show in, in the railway arch and we did the final the bit. The door got stuck. We got the door got stuck. We got locked out. There was also a flood. Down. Yeah, there were so many things wrong with that rehearsal space. But we also um, we did the final. We did the moment where the, where the scenery falls down, uh, and then we sat down with all the scenery falling down to do some notes. Yeah. And then the actual wall of the rehearsal room fell down. Yeah. And that was quite a good kind of acting exercise for everyone because ev everyone was like, remember, remember that reaction that you had, <laughs> that utter fear and the stillness and all of that was kind of we then used for the, for the, for the show. <laughs> yeah. It's been playing in the UK since I think 2012. Broadway tours to the UK, tours to the United States, gorgeous set. What were those early pub days like? What were those performances like? What kind of set did you have? We all built it. We built it ourselves, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a, a 300 pound set that we put together. It was the, the three flats. I mean, mm. this side, this the half of it, basically. 300 pounds, like 300 like, like, pounds, like sterling, not like the weight. In weight, I don't know what it weighed, <laughs> but it was lighter than this one. And yeah, no, it was, no, it was amazing. I mean, it, you know, we, it was very, very basic. You know, it was all, we, and we put the whole production together kind of ourselves. Um, so we did everything from building the scenery to, to sort of sorting out the costumes, to, to writing it, to performing in it. 
um, and, and, and doing the tech, you know, all that stuff. I think it is only fair because there's this thing where we always say we built it together. And, and I think that's unfair because I, 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 I played more of a supportive role in the building process. I did a lot of like, that's great, everyone. <laughs> My building skills are not, they're not good. I'm not a carpenter. I did a bit of painting. I can paint. I can route. Do you remember? Yeah, we route. discovered what that. What is routing? <laughs> routing is, so you know how like um, the, like the, these bits, like the, the beveling. Here, oh yeah, okay. Like the, to make that shape, you have to use a router. Okay. So I can, I, I can route So you did that in the pub? I did the routing, but okay. the rest of the set was <laughs> built by everyone else in the team. Yeah. I know. So I believe there's, there were two chaises, or chaises, on Broadway, right? That's correct. How do you say it? Chaise. Chaise, okay. <laughs> there were two of them, right? Mm. What did you have at the pub? <laughs> Barely one. <laughs> well, I think there, there was there, there was one chaise long at the pub, and that was why it was a chaise long because that, that was all we ha that was all we had. Had it been a an armchair, I guess probably it would have been an armchair. It was but. from a production of the importance of being earnest. <laughs> the the, the cast yeah, yeah. were just like we don't want that. It, it's horrible, and it had just been left in the the basement of the pub with all the beer barrels and stuff. And we took that upstairs. Like we'll write that into the show, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It, was, it was completely kind of battered. We had we, we were the set. We were the second show when we first did it at the pub. We were on after a show that finished with um, the final moment of the of the main <laughs> show. Was it uh, like a like a like a rice drop, like cascading rain, uh, rice <laughs> falling all over the stage? I don't quite know why that was the, how they finished the show, but they did. And so we so before the show, we had we literally had fifteen minutes to turn it around, and we were sweeping up all this rice, uh, and we were always slipping on the rice and stuff. So here's it was. A, here's a memory of the show as well that I have is obviously now like most sets in you know in theatre are obviously stuck to the floor. Well, not stuck, but nailed down. I imagine. Um, the, <laughs> The, 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 because we were the second show on, we didn't have the luxury of being able to uh, like secure the set to the ground. And obviously this set, there's doors slamming, things falling, all kinds of stuff happening. So if you weren't on stage, you would leave, and then we each had a spot with our initials on, and your job was to brace the, like, literally brace the set. And occasionally, like, the door would be slammed, and the set would move back, and we had these lines, and everyone would go, and we'd inch it forward really slowly yeah, so yeah. the audience couldn't see. And it was very important that it was in the right place because later when the, I don't know if it's a spoiler, but later there's a thing that happens with the set, which means if, if, that, if the set hadn't been edged into the right place, then there would have been an injury. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, no, yeah. So we were always, always creeping, making sure everything was on its marks, yeah. No, um, we had, I think the second run we did at the Old Red Lion, we, we sawed some brackets and improved it slightly, but yeah. It was, the physical comedy in this show was amazing. How did you guys keep your bodies in shape during the show when you did it here in New York and in London? Well, I think we sort of, there was a bit, I mean, a, maybe a little bit of trial and error at the beginning, but I think we, we sort of soon became aware that in order to be able to do the show for a long period of time, we had to make sure that obviously it was, we weren't doing anything kind of unsafe. And so uh, it was all, you know, it's all about trying to make sure we find ways of doing things where it looks really dangerous, but actually it, it sort of, it is safe and, and we know exactly, but it, lots of precision is required in order to make it safe. People have got to be, as you're saying with the set, everything had to be on its mark. Everyone has to be in, in exactly the right place. Uh, we, we talk a bit more about that as well when we look at the yeah. shield here, yeah. Okay, is there a performance where something really went wrong that wasn't supposed to go wrong? I've got a story. So it's worth saying that when, when we're talking about the show being on the pub theatre, this is what, this is a decade ago this Christmas. So so since, you know, there's an army of health and safety officers that are, that are part of the show. And so, so none of this is kind of part of this production. Yeah. But we the the the, um, the pub theatre was incredibly small. And um, once you were in, there was there was no real way out. So the show started, and there's a bit where the dialogue starts to loop, and it goes round and round and round. And it's really important that in that bit that the kind of comedic tension is being built. And I could see as we were going round, there was this guy who was just shifting and shifting and moving. And I was like, what's what, what what's he doing? What's he doing? And in the end, he just got up, walked across the set, like literally as we were performing, walked across the set, walked off somewhere, and then appeared in the window asking one of the actors where the restroom was and then walked and then like walked off and he was a little bit a little bit tipsy i would say and then like years later years and years later i was in a starbucks and this guy came up to me um and he was like excuse me and i was like yeah, it was a police officer. yes it was a police officer so i was like yes officer um and he was like can i have a word and I was like, uh, yes, okay. And I'm quite a, quite a nervous guy in general, as this interview probably shows. And I went over to him. I said, oh, you know, what, what's the problem? And he said, were you in a show called The Play That Goes Wrong? And I was like, 
I was, yes. And he was like, I owe you a huge apology. Um, it was my birthday. I had too many drinks. And I believe I walked across the stage while you were mid-performance. So that's a weird... I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, came full circle with that guy. <laughs> Something go wrong for you? There's been a few. I mean, a few different, a few different crazy things. I mean, I think um, um, uh, there's the there's the night of the raspberries. So oh. we had, so we were doing the show on tour um, at the beginning of the second act. The curtain goes up and no one's ready. Everyone's kind of on stage still. Mm -hmm. Then the curtain goes down and then we start. Uh, it goes up again, obviously, and then we start. And then, um, but uh, th there was we had <laughs> one of our understudy ASMs with us, a uh, fantastic guy uh, called Chris, and um, he always was doing a different thing. So sometimes he'd be reading a newspaper, sometimes he'd have a magazine, sometimes he'd have his phone. And one day he thought it would just be hilarious. And he had a big box of raspberries and he was eating the raspberries. And that was the thing. The curtain goes out, <laughs> eating the raspberries, curtain goes down. Um, but the curtain, in this particular venue, it was the first show in that venue and the curtain was in a slightly different place. The curtain f came down on him. He spilt the raspberries everywhere, <laughs> right? Um, they threw them in the air as well. Yeah. They just panicked. Panicked. Didn't, was just away. like, oh, no, ran off. <laughs> John, never forget John's reaction. Just like, oh no! And then the curtain went out, and we were back up under the lights. So we had to carry on. So the whole I tell the audience were just like, why is there fruit everywhere? Yeah. And he was never explained. No, never explained. So that was very weird but to begin with. But what was even what made it even weirder was then all the people who weren't on stage and hadn't seen that happen didn't even know he had raspberries. Came on stage one by one and just sort of did this double take of just. There's ra like, just doing their lines, knowing that there was raspberries everywhere and just completely confused. And it just got funnier and funnier. It became absolutely ridiculous. There's one bit, obviously, where people fall over. People were covered in raspberry juice. It the looked like a bloodbath by the end. It was... And slippy, and obviously, the focus <laughs> shifts between kind of down here and up there. And every time the focus shift up there, someone would just be like, John, why is there fruit everywhere? What's happened? Yeah. And like, but that made it even funnier. Oh. And at the end of the night, Chris, the understudy, came to me and said, shall I not do the raspberries? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, maybe, maybe not the raspberries. Maybe a fruit that isn't in small pieces. <laughs> That's rough to clean up oh, raspberries. No fruit, it gets everywhere. No, no, fruit. no fruit, period. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about Mischief Theatre. I mean, your company is such an amazing company. You've written a lot of different plays since this one, right? How many different goes wrong pieces are there? In the goes wrong range, we have two others. So we have... Uh, mm -hmm. The range. It's not, it's not clothing, is it? <laughs> it could be. It could be. I mean, I've been, I've, for many years, I've been talking about the goes wrong clothing range. Um, but no, uh, yeah, so we have Peter Pan goes wrong. Uh, we, and that's on in Edmonton at the moment. We just saw that the other day uh, up in Canada. And uh, then we have Magic Goes Wrong, which we've just finished doing uh, in the West End, which we co-created with Penn and Teller, the magicians. Uh, and that's been a lot of fun uh, as well. That's, and that's uh, Peter Pan is the same kind of actor characters, the Cornley Drama Society. Magic Goes Wrong is a different group of magicians. Yeah. yeah. And there's the Goes Wrong show, which is the TV show. Of course, yeah, Goes Wrong show. And then outside of that, there's a couple of other shows as well. We've done the comedy about a bank robbery, which is kind of a sort of mad caper, sort of Marx Brothers kind of style um, uh, uh, set in the US, actually set in Minneapolis. Um, uh, so that, that, that was good fun. And we also did Grown Ups as well. It's just yeah. finished its UK tour. So yeah, lots of different bits and pieces. All started at school, all started in this little flat you lived in. And now look where you guys are. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been a, it's been a it's been a crazy adventure, really. I mean, yeah, we we, we sort of feel so sort of um, we're just yeah. I mean, I'm just very lucky. I'm very, lucky. I'm very yeah. very glad that people enjoy the work. Perfect. Now, are you going to show us uh, how something works in this show? We're going to show you a, a gang. I love this. Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking forward to this. I'm still scared though. That's why I'm like, oh. And you're going to have a go, right? Oh, of course I'm going to have a go. You know it. My worry is I'm not I'm not always excellent at timing. I'm sure I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and if I don't, that'll We've be funny. One thousand three hundred performances. Well, I didn't do this bit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so there's a moment in the show where uh, Inspector Carter, or Chris Bean, as yeah. Inspector Carter walks on, uh, and the shield uh, swings down, hits him in the face, and he falls back uh, back here. Uh, so we're, that's what we're going to do. Um, uh, now, we've got a mat in for now. Okay. Uh, it's normally done without a mat, uh, but we've got a mat uh, there just for... Because I didn't go to the play that goes wrong school. Exactly. I didn't go to the <laughs> circus training school, right? So just, yeah, so what happens. Well. This is a slapstick, which is where well. the term slapstick comes from, and this is what we use to make the noises of the hits in the show. Absolutely. Do you want to give it a test? There we go. There nice and loud. Okay, so... Five years of training. I'm going, to give you, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration. And then okay. We'll, we'll, then, we'll, then we'll have you do it, right? So there's a mark here, which is on the floor, where you'll stand. Yes. And that makes sure, uh, obviously, that you're safe. Because uh, it swings down. <laughs> and it comes slightly back into the doorway. Yeah. But as long as you're standing on the red mark, it won't hit you in the face. And then after that, during the actual show, the person comes in and is then pushed back out. But for now, we'll just take it from here. Um, the mat's in place. So, when you're ready. Thank you. 
That is incredible. I think I was a little late with the stick, wasn't oh, I? Maybe oh. a little late. <laughs> a little late. A little late. late. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. It comes off. <laughs> it comes off. It's remembered that it does that. That's the key thing that uh, everyone should take away from that. Uh, of course, yes. a souvenir to go with this last yeah. thing. Absolutely. Shield. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so then it takes it off and throws it out. The <laughs> That's the whole routine. It's so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> take two. That was perfect. Ooh, okay. Oh, that's it. And then you throw it out the door. Okay. That's how it goes. There you go. Up for it. We're going for it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So I'm going to do the matinee. So I'll do the matinee performances. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I've, I've never felt more pressure in my life than reading this. <laughs> so this is my callback audition for To Play That Goes Wrong. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> You know, this show has brought so much joy to millions of people around the world, between London, the UK, the US tour, Australia. You're back here, we're standing on the stages here at New World Stages. I mean, audiences are coming back. Mm. I mean, what does it all mean to you, the joy this show has given to so many people? I mean, this is a really hard question to put into words, but like, it means so, so much. Like, to be honest, when I was watching it here the other night, I found myself, as well as laughing, I found myself welling up quite a lot. So it, yeah. means, it means a great deal. It yeah. really does. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is really amazing. And I think to, I, I think, yeah, I, I kind of as I've said, but people really do need to laugh at the moment. And I think mm -hmm. to, to be the kind of ones who are able to kind of uh, provide that through the show that we've made is, is, is a real privilege. And, and I think yeah. um, I just, I'm really, I'm really, really glad that the show's back up and running here and starting to open up around the world. It's really, really special. Yeah. Um, I'm really, really keen for, uh, for, for us to come to New York with more shows and, 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 and keep building the, building the brand here and, and, and spreading the laughter further. Well, everybody at Broadway World, we fell in love with you back in 2017. We spent a lot of time together and here we are now in 2022, doing it again. Yeah. yeah. With my audition here for the play that goes wrong. How did I do? We'll, we'll, we'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I think that's good. That's, yeah, good. that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks so much. <laughs> so Congratulations. Good to see you. <laughs> the best. That was the best.